I'm starting the recording for our Chaos DNI workgroup meeting on January 21st, 2019. Welcome everyone. The meeting minutes uh, we just talked about a little bit. So one item we have on here is the, um, the DNI tutorial. Update on last week's action items. Um, we do have, well, we were asked to talk about if we can have an outreach project. Uh, there might be potential for funding. And we also can think about if we want a Google Summer of Code intern. Um, but that is more code oriented than outreachy. So that's something we can discuss. Uh, if we have time, at some point, we should revise, uh, revisit our updated goals. And I saw that Emma did some more work on it in the meantime. So any other items for the uh, agenda? Okay. Perfect. I would say we start with the Dean I tutorial. Who's uh, taking notes, by the way, today? I can. Awesome. That would be nice. Thank you. I think I had volunteered. I don't remember. But I'm facilitating. So uh, I would say we start with the DNI tutorial content. Um, Don, that is you. And Daniel. Don, you do seem frozen. Your tethered <laughs> internet connection seems. <laughs> Spotty, just like you thought. Yeah. Um, well, just to keep advancing here, uh, we had a meeting this morning where we were discussing about the tutorial, um, how to have this more interactive in the sense of having people doing things. Um, we came with the idea of We'll first have a similar presentation, trying to be shorter because we only have one hour, so up to 10 or 15 minutes. And once we have this, the idea is to go through some of the issues in the, hey, Don, how are you? Okay, sorry, I know what happened. I, I connected my monitor, which also had a network cable connected and it switched me to the network that doesn't exist anymore. So I'm gonna try to. No, it, was, it was introducing <laughs> the, the work plan this morning. You're back. Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, the idea is, so we have a list of issues that we would like to work on. Um, as we don't want anyone else to work on them, uh, our idea is that we assign them to us, basically. Well, all of them were assigned to, to Don Foster. Um, uh, the, the tutorial will have this presentation of 10, 15 minutes, introduction of a couple of uh, finished uh, questions from uh, two different uh, focus areas and then we are proposing to the people uh, to split in groups and depending how many people we have uh, the idea is that at least Don and me we can lead some of the groups and then we can help to produce something so people can go directly to the Google Doc document and work there all together um, that's more or less the tutorial yeah, and you can see that on slide 12, we have the list of issues that we thought would be kind of good, um, or basically focus area pages that we thought, thought would be good starting points. So um, does anybody, before we go too far down this path, um, does anybody think this is a terrible idea to get people to work in groups and start to just uh, work on some of these metrics? Because my, my thought was, I don't know, maybe Daniel explained this while I, while I got kicked off, but my thought was that um, rather than focusing the working group on how to build a diversity and inclusion report, which is kind of what our focus was in Edinburgh, um, because we only have an hour at ChaosCon, I was hoping just to get more people interested in participating in the working group. And it seemed like an interactive tutorial where they could start um, working on some actual work might get people interested. Yeah, and I, I really like this idea. And I like how you linked it to issues is what it looks like you're doing. Mm -hmm. They're on slide 12 because it would be yeah. really great to capture that work 
in the repository as opposed mm -hmm. to just kind of ephemerally in the workshop? Yeah. Yeah, because each of those issues actually links off to a Google Doc, which is templated for, um, yeah. for working on these things. So it's got, you know, the description, the, uh, I think it was the measurements in a few different areas. Actually, I'm going to so steal they, that. I, I'm going to steal that idea because it's a really great way if you're going to do that type of work to get people to work in the space that you want them to work. Mm -hmm. So, and they're Google Docs, so they're super accessible to most people. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Okay. So that's again, pretty much it. And again, I'm almost. stealing that idea. <laughs> do it. Just so you know. <laughs> Um, so cool. One, if anybody doesn't, oh, go ahead. So, so one thing that I that I've seen with just picking up an issue and working through it is that it's really difficult for someone who has not been involved in the work we've been doing so far to feel comfortable contributing. Where I've seen this is through my interviews and also the work that we're doing. Um, it, it helps to have uh, something already there where we ask them to revise it. That way they feel more comfortable contributing um, because otherwise we have to spend so much time getting them up to speed on the format, what goes where, what kind of information you want. Um, so that is something to consider that we should maybe seed these issues before we give it to them. Yeah, I thought about that, but the downside of doing the downside of doing that is if you're asking them to revise something we've already done, um, then they don't feel like they're really getting to contribute something. You know what I mean? Like it feels um, if we do too much of it, then it feels like there's nothing left to do. Yeah. People people look at it and be like, oh, that sounds good, because they know what they're talking about. I'm sure it's fine. You you know, I, mean? I understand that concern. I'm just kind of, yeah. I, again, my, my concern is that they are going to be stuck in the beginning where they're like, what is supposed to go here? Mm -hmm. What is it supposed to look like? Yeah. I mean, if I I'm follow hoping that Ahead, I was hoping I was hoping that having it be a group activity, they could work through that together. And as they do, learn more about diversity and inclusion in general. And Daniel and I will be there to help them. And if it goes completely off the rails, we can <laughs> um, clean it up and leave comments in the doc and no harm, no foul. Um, so okay. I, had, I had two comments on that. I think one is um, on these workshops, it's that continuum of if you don't provide structure, things get really wide really fast mm -hmm. and they fan out really far, um, right? And if you overstructure, then maybe they don't feel like, so it's, it's that balance in between. Mm -hmm. And if I follow the, the issue link, which subsequently takes me to the Google Doc, I think that's what you want, Emma and mm -hmm. Dan, to ultimately end up in the Google Doc. I think the headers mm -hmm. and the description in there so like, for example, sample objectives, number two, on community inclusivity and captioning. That's what I was looking at. Um, it just says this section provides a list of reasons a community wants to assess this question. So I think there's structure. Mm -hmm. You can take a look in the Google Docs to kind of orient people. So what yeah, that's what I was hoping was that the template would provide enough structure that people could get yeah. oriented. And then we're also going to print off the two examples on slide eight and nine. So we used the board council diversity example and the event diversity example. Um, speaker demographics is the event diversity example. Maybe I should just say that. Um, okay. So they can see what these ideally, um, what these would look like when they've been completed. So they'll okay. have those as well. So they'll have two completed templates and then they'll have templates for um, for the issues. And the reason we link to the issues instead of the Google Docs is that um, we won't be able to see that the, the issues are there. And if there's been any discussion already in the issue, then they'll have that context. You know, I think people could even just at the end, just provide a brief response in the issue. Like our group has made changes. Thanks very much. <laughs> it was, yeah. You know, just 
<laughs> so I like it. Would it would also be good if you could ask them to include their names so that we can mm -hmm. recognize them as contributors on our readme. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but we should, um, let me make that explicit. Um, Okay, anything else you want um, from us for the tutorial? No, I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, then I'm going to add an item to our agenda. I saw that Emma was writing in the Google Doc uh, in the non-verbal update. Oh, okay, I thought you would be done by now, so I was just trying to write my thing and leave, so... Sorry about that. While you're doing that, I did have one question on the for the tutorial. Is it Daniel and Don? Are the two of you are the ones running it? Just curious who's gonna be there. Yes. Okay. Okay, Emma, do you want to verbalize what you were writing? Sure. sure. Yep. Yes, I will. Yeah. So I couldn't stay, but I I was just doing some thinking about uh, the is is this about the um, contribution types conversation? Yes. And I was thinking, uh, like that's my challenge to you for, uh, for those that didn't read the email was that like our goals and our like questions should like be very specific about inclusion and, and, and the work that we're trying to do. But contribution types, it feels like we're building, we're building those because they're not there yet, right? Like they're not, like one would expect like a, there to be a, a metric around contribution type coming into chaos no matter what, right? And then th that we would apply, if I was just coming into chaos I'd, and I wanted to you know, do work on contribution types, but it wasn't specific to DNI, I, like I wouldn't look there first. Um, and um, I guess what I'm suggesting and mutter, uh, mumbling a little bit is that maybe we uh, can be more deliberate about where some things are built. So, like, obviously we need to build this and it's really important, but does it make sense for all the, con the contribution definitions to be in the DNI repo? Um, and I suggest, like, it just be the, just be the DNI specific layer or lens on contribution types that would be there. And I don't know where, I don't know if there is a repo or working group that is a more natural like location or that we just create it. Like maybe we, maybe there's another repo with it. I, I don't have a proposal for what that repo name is or anything like that, but just that, you know, we find ourselves building things because they don't exist yet. Just putting them in our repo uh, might add bloat and then ultimately be hard for people to navigate so that was okay. like um emma we keep we've been having this conversation around a bunch of other metrics organizational um affiliation okay. being one of them yeah, and yeah we're actually starting a new we're starting a new working group to ah. deal with um uh what was it sean called it like the land of misfit i don't know metrics or something <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's basically, we're going to work directly in the metrics working group repository to define those metrics that don't fit into either working group, but are super important. Yeah, it's almost so, like core, right? Like they're like core yeah. metrics. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think this will fit into that. So I've, I've just dropped a quick comment on it that we should probably move this to the um, okay, cool. metrics working group, which we haven't really named yet, but we're going to start okay. up probably, probably yeah. next week or the week after. That sounds awesome. Cool. And so I, I know that there is a lot of things in contribution type just because I had to define a lot of things. The DNI lens that I see on this metric is that people have different skills and by demonstrating that we value different skills, we make our community more inclusive. And that's what it boils down to. Um, yes, and I think my, but my comments were like, and there's a whole bunch of other DNI metrics that we, you know, can pull out of contribution types. Like that's one, but it's not the only one. 
Yeah. Right. So, so, so that might be like, oh, look, it's mostly women doing documentation. And then we apply it like, and then, oh, look, we also don't value documentation. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get back to working on that after my dissertation in a few days or weeks. So thank so you very I, much. I have a question then. So the idea is that contribution type, in this case, a little like organizational diversity that Don was mentioning, would contribution type, do you see it kind of being a focus area, so to speak, under which there can be different lenses that could be applied to understand contribution type? Different lenses to understand diversity. Diversity. Okay. Using contribution type. So that was a core set of metrics in the this new magical place in chaos. We would just, <laughs> right, like, we would extend it to help us understand some other things. And you know, one of the biggest uses might be for DNI, but there, okay. there might, you know, does that make sense? So, sort I'm of. Proposing. I'm not suggesting I have the answers. <laughs> okay. I no, no problem. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to, maybe more will kind of come to light when this new magical work group gets going. I like this <laughs> magical notion. Um, and, the, and the structure will kind of emerge from that. I guess I'm always just hoping that the, the focus area structure with then the subsequent metrics that kind of derive from those focus areas, I hope that that structure can stay in this new magical work group as well. That's all. However, it gets laid out. Yeah, that's one of the things we're going to have to look at is um, whether or not we we have some focus areas and what about things that don't fit into focus areas. So there's okay. still a lot to be figured out, I think, in that new working group. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Sean to respond. I know it's a three day weekend in the U.S., so um, he hasn't replied to the doodle yet. So okay. once I get his response, I'll go ahead and get it scheduled. All right, cool. I'll ping is him right now. Is there a mailing list to stay up to date on that? Uh, right now, I'm just using the main chaos mailing list. Oh, okay. I, I don't read that very often, so I will start to read it more. <laughs> and if a new list needs to be formed, just obviously let me know. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking since these are sort of core metrics that the main chaos list is probably the place to do it because it's something that um, affects all of the other working groups. It's not something like DNI is kind of separate and it's nice for us to have a place to sort of turn on things that we aren't quite finished with. But I think with the metrics, uh, I think everybody's going to care about them. So I, I don't think it makes sense to break them off into something separate. So on the idea of focus area, I don't know if that's the right or the future way we will think about it. It's similar to commits where we have different ways of looking at commits and commits is just one of the contribution types. Um, so I think contribution types is an overarching way of measuring communities. Anyway. I, I just have one other thing to add and then my way of thinking would may or may not be helpful. It is from a developer's perspective, like a lot, um, in, in the object-oriented program, you create an object, right, that has like attributes and common functions that you can call and and then you would bring that object in and you, would, you might extend it to do other things that are specific to like your organization. And so that's how I've been thinking, when I was thinking about contribution types, I thought of it as like an object that I would put, you know, that D and I would inherit and then, you know, add its own uh, attributes and like variations on. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not either, but just like the idea of like creating components or we're using them as um, focus areas, but that that there's a, a core set of uses, but that other working groups like would apply their own lenses and build on that. I see. That makes sense. It's probably a good way of thinking about it. I hadn't really thought about it that way before. Yeah, again, like it's just it. a proposal. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense to others, so. Okay. Any other ideas, comments, thoughts on contribution type metric? Otherwise, we continue. The next item on our agenda is to review last week's action items. And I put them here at the top of the notes. 
So the first one was for Nicole, who's not here. Um, but I know she and Sarah worked on the OSLS submission and it's complete. Yeah, Sarah was a, looked like she was a huge help on putting together proposals. It's fantastic. <laughs> Agreed. Awesome. Yeah, the same for the next one, for the OSCON. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, you and Don were going to do the DNI tutorial session, which you presented, so that's complete. Well, you need um, the description for the website, right? Is that what that was, or was it something yes, else? Yes, I do want to put it. OK. Um, is there a reason you didn't just take it from the CFP form, the abstract? Uh, because it, we hadn't originally submitted it as a workshop. It was something else, and then we changed it. Oh, I think we submitted it as a panel. Yeah. Mm, might be. OK. Um, OK, Daniel, do you want to send that, or should I? put something together. We can take the Edinburgh one and modify it a bit. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I got do it. it. Oh, I yeah? Can. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can do it afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Awesome, thank you. Um the contributing and read me, I don't, I haven't seen work done. Um, I don't know what to, what status to give it. Just say open. And then the last one, add disclaimer to pull request about paid unpaid. The pull request is now merged before I got to it. So it's, I, I could either create a new pull request or just dismiss this. Any ideas? So what's, what's the problem about this? So right for the, I, we had a pull request to add eight hundred as a um, new demographic information. Mm -hmm. And we had some concerns about how it can easily be misunderstood. And so we wanted to add that. I'll create a new pull request. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts, comments, ideas on action items? And then we can move on to um, Outreachy or Google Summer of Code projects. The idea is that we could have an intern either through Google Summer of Code. The recruiting phase is starting here fairly soon in February. If we have a coding project that we could use a uh, intern's help for, then we can add that to the list of ideas for the chaos project and hope we get interested people. Or if we have something that is less code oriented, Outreachy would be a venue and Matt said he might uh, find some funding for this. So. Yeah, so I'll chime in there. I'm going to a meeting like two weeks from today at the Sloan Foundation. And there's an opportunity to perhaps find some support at, at a meeting like that. So I'll do my best for Outreachy. So basically, you know, with Outreachy, you have to bring $6,500 to the table. That's what it is. And so you propose the project and you bring the money to support the student. Um, and a, a participant in the outreachy program. So that's all. We'll give that a shot. So the question for us is, what project would we have for such an intern? 
yeah, if you don't have a project, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the specific action we need to do is to think of a potential project, right? So that's the action. Correct. And the deadline is the beginning of February, you said. Okay. Uh, for Google Summer of Code, but that's a technical oriented one. So like Baturgia, like Jesus is putting together some stuff for the GMB mm -hmm. for, um, for Google Summer of Code. And so Outreachy, I think, is later. I don't think we're under a time pressure like that. I think it might be March for Outreachy. So I think at this point, the question would be, do you want me to try to pursue support for Outreachy? You do, I wouldn't need a proposal really right now. I could speak vaguely in terms of what a student would be. Um, so that's all. So I think it's a generally good idea. I, I'm just having um, some trouble thinking of what we would have them do. Um, because what, what we've been doing so far is a lot of small work. Well, it, it's not small, but um, work on the metrics that is not a project with start yeah it's kind of more incremental work yes and so if we were to put together a project maybe it would be something like revising everything or having a sample implementation working with the project to I mean, part, of, part of my I, my thoughts on outreachy be something along the lines of um, assembling um, kind of a, a distributable document to people that they could use to monitor or to report um, DNI at conferences, but then also as part of that document suggesting how that information can be gathered and displayed. I think that'd be a great project as to thinking about how how to how to kind of Cell is not the right word, but provide a document that people could approach these particular metrics in that focus area, how they could collect the data, and how they could represent that data. Yeah, so, so this year, or the last year, no, the last year, Emma had a, an outreach student, and yeah. well, she even presented here, if you remember. Yeah, I do. Mm, and so on. So I would say that um, at least we, we have couple of projects that might be one, the one you mentioned about having, providing kind of a website where people can fill information about uh, the focus areas or having something at the very end, like a final doc or something. Yep. Um, the other one would be like trying to, autom to automate part of the metrics, if, if that's possible, but I'm not sure. And then uh, perhaps try to have uh, keep working on the on the work by Danny Mozilla by I don't remember the name well by this uh, outreach student. Um, if I recall, that was kind of like dashboard ways to represent the information. It wasn't an actual functional dashboard, but I think it was more visual, like a UI. Yeah, it was kind of a mock-up done with the fake data, but done with the Kibana. But something like this would be really useful. Indeed, one of, for instance, for the OpenStack gender report, one of the things we, we've been using is uh, Kibana uh, yep. charts or, or some other chart, but based on, on the Grumar lab thing. So that might be something interesting as well. Yep, agreed. Uh, that is probably something we have to discuss, right? So how about this? I will um, I will at least pursue funding. I'll take a look and see if there's any interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if the, if the answer is no, then this all might be a moot point. <laughs> but if the answer is yes, then um, you know perhaps then some focus to what the project might be could mm -hmm. could start then. And I'll, I'll have more information in just a couple of weeks. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Matt. Cool.
Okay, so then the next item is um, revisit and update goals for 2019. I'm opening the issue tracker and the Google Doc. Bye, everybody. I got to go. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Time. Have a good yeah. day. Thank you. So I would like to um, finish the discussion around goals for 2019 because it's almost the end of January and there are only 11 more months. <laughs> so instead of talking about what we want to do, we should start doing. Um, the question is, how do we get there? The document as it stands right now, we have um, four objectives, which I feel like we already agree on. Um, so I, I don't know what we need to do here. Um, any ideas what we need to do to get this document finished? So I would say, and I have not been discussing here a lot in this document, I mean, is well, first, we should have some kind of deadline for this. Um, so let's say uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks from now or three weeks or two months, I don't know, but at least have a deadline. Um, so that will help to, to set the goals that we have for 2019. And then when this is done, uh, clean the document and basically put this in the front page of the working group. Um, then this is what we are going to do. And probably during the first, during the next three meetings, once we have set up the goals, try to have kind of a kind reminder about, hey, these are the goals for this year, remember? So any work we do should be aligned with the goals that we, we all decided. And these are my two cents. So I feel like that's what we've been doing so far where we just keep reminding ourselves that, hey, we need to work on the goals. So we need to close this conversation. And um, hmm. the... So I would suggest perhaps to have this done by FOSDEM. So right after FOSDEM. Uh, and, I, I, and I mean FOSDEM. Because it's, it's a place where basically some of us will see each other face to face. And yeah. That may lead to some other discussions and you say, hey, this might be interesting for this. That's the only rationale I have for this. Okay, Boston is a good deadline to have this done. How, how can we make sure that it's done by then? What are the steps we need to take? That's what I'm not clear on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, so there are some comments. I, I would say someone should lead this document and follow others. And everyone should be aware that this is finishing in a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, basically next week. <laughs> Donna, are you still with us? I saw you changing headphones and... <laughs> yeah, my, my internet came back up. So rather than <laughs> tethering on my phone, I am back to an actual, actual internet connection. Woo. Um, <laughs> I mean, so my, my take on this is, uh, you know, I do think that it's a good idea to have this, uh, completed by FOSDEM. Um, the reality is with, with goals, you're never, you're never really done, done. And so I think it's okay to have, you know, like a first draft that is, 
sort of good enough for our purposes um, by FOSDEM. And that seems, that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So how about this? I will, I will clean it up and send it out to the mailing list. And then we have the mailing list review phase until um, next week or for one week. And then we put it on our repository and we start implementing. Mm. Yeah, I, I would suggest to have this open till after FOSDEM. Because in FOSDEM, we may have some feedback from the people uh, in the chaos con or some discussions between chaos members. But mm -hmm. that's all. And that's great. And if we do, I'm happy to update it. Um, there's no, no issue. I just would like to move it out of the state that it's in right now. So I, I think. I th hmm. So here's here's what I would suggest. I think that um, I think that just uh, cleaning it up and accepting all of the changes and uh, the comments and things will get us pretty far down the path of making this look a little bit better for other people to consume. So maybe if we get the the doc in a re in really good shape before FOSDEM and then put it up in the repository right after FOSDEM, does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. Um. We can. What? So, what are you going to point people to during Boston? Then it's hidden somewhere in the in a document in an issue or pull request. Mm -hmm. We accept it into the repository before Boston. It's right there for people to see, and Boston is a great place for people to get good feedback. Yeah. So that's why I think putting it on the repo, getting the conversation closure for now before. I think that's probably fine. I don't really I don't really have a big preference. I mean if it if it goes out of the dock and in, into the repo, then we can just provide feedback there. Yeah. So Daniel, you said you hadn't looked at this. Do you want a few days before I clean it up to Give feedback and comment on it. Go ahead. I mean, I can discuss on this afterwards. So don't worry about yeah. me. Well, it might be good if you if you cleaned it up and got um, kind of a like a good state of the document, and then we could all take one more look at it during the next meeting. Okay. Because I think we will probably the meetings on Monday. I don't go to FOSDEM until Wednesday, so we should have we should have time to have give people a chance to have one one last look at it before it goes into the repository. Does that work for you? Yeah, Garrick? works for me. Because to be honest, right now, this document is such a mess right now with comments and things crossed out and suggestions that it's actually quite, quite difficult to read. <laughs> How bad is my typing, by the way? What do you mean? When I type, can you hear it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty clickety-clackety. Okay. I, I, I'm getting close to just buying a more silent <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> or a better headset. Yeah, which I'm not using one, but yeah. <laughs> Either one would help help with the sound. All right. I will do that. Um, open pull request. There's nothing to go through. Any other items you have? Um, hi, uh, my name is Emmanuel. I think I messaged you a few weeks back. Uh, we're currently working on like a diversity and inclusion project at Boston University. Um, that like we wanted to kind of upstream, kind of work with you guys, or like maybe get some feedback on like what we're working on. Um, yeah, I guess that's why I started like coming to the meetings. Welcome. Hi. Um, Do you want to? So I get. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah. I just wanted to. Um, I know you explained that 
to me, but maybe you want to explain it to the group, what it is. Yes. Yeah, of course. So, um, so we, Boston University and Red Hat started working on like a mini project, like looking at like uh, diversity and inclusion in like open source communities and like collecting metrics around those things. Um, so like we're currently, like, we're currently in the phase of just like collecting and finding out more about like the space. That's whenever I found out about chaos, uh, about like November last year. Um, and so, uh, as we get closer to like actually starting like programming and like getting the project off the ground, we wanted to kind of make it visible for other people who are also doing things like this to kind of see and like maybe also contribute or, uh, things like that. Um, and so we're having a career, like a, 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 we're having a round table, um, in about like a few weeks after Fosdom because one of the people run, uh, helping run the round table is going to be there. Uh, so we're going to have a round table after that, just kind of like discussing the possible metrics that we're going to be looking at and collecting and like pretty much how to go about doing all those things and um, like making sure like the, the project is good and like easily portable for, for people to use. It's um, so like that's like the idea behind the project. Have you seen um, some of the examples that uh, that we have, like the uh, the OpenStack gender diversity report, for example? Um, I've not seen the OpenStack gender. Uh, I, I haven't seen that report, but I did um, see the metrics you guys were talking about after we had initially come up with our metrics, uh, mm -hmm. and they were very similar in terms of like what we were looking at, and that's why I decided to like, initially reach out because I felt like we were like we all got. To, we all got to almost the same conclusion without ever talking to each other. So, which I thought was a bit interesting. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's great validation for the work you are doing and we are doing. Were there ideas that you had that we did not have? Um, I haven't like compared it, but I, I'm pretty sure you guys, uh, I, I, um, right during this meeting, you guys were talking about like having like the straw man where like it, it's like you almost use the metrics as like a lens and you can like take things out and put things in and like different like working groups could use that so that's not something we have thought of yet and so I, I really like that as well and you guys also had like core metrics which are, are things that I like we're only looking at metrics that point us towards like diversity and inclusion but, but we could like, like if we're collecting out if we're gonna look at a lot of metrics we could use core metrics plus this whole like straw man kind of o -O -O project thing where you can take it and look at metrics or take it and look at how diversity and inclusion are like effect are, are you know, sorry, you can look at the diversity and inclusion in a certain community and that kind of stuff. So that's like something you guys have that we definitely did not have in that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just always interested to see what else we're missing, what, what we can add. Mm -hmm. Um, Emmanuel, just coming here, the way we are working, and this might be useful for, for everyone, is that we are trying to uh, have a common set of goals. So everyone can, let's say, use chaos as a centralized play, place where we uh, keep adding ideas and comments and improve the metrics and the documents and so on. But at the same time, it's useful mm -hmm. for your daily work. So. Do you think it's useful for you if we try to align some of your interests with the chaos uh, general interest? Um, so in a way that basically you you work with us all together in the same line, and then basically you take some things from chaos to your daily work. Is is this something useful for you? Um, yeah, I think it will be useful. Uh... I just like uh, from from that um, perspective, um, we just have to. I guess I I guess like I'm the only person from my team that's currently here, but um, it's always like I I'll, I got have to take it back to discuss it with them. But I I feel like everyone will be on board for something like that. Yeah. Okay. That, that, I mean, that, oh, go ahead. Sure. Oh, I was just gonna say it'd be great to have you come in and do kind of a presentation about about your thinking so far, even if it's just you know. I don't know your plan for what you're doing. If you haven't done the metrics yet, we'd we'd love to see that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that, that that sounds good. Um, maybe like next week's meeting, I could just do like a short uh, presentation, just like what like, like what we were planning on doing uh, with the project overall, because we're mm -hmm. still like working on 
flipping parts of it out. We, we don't want it to be too big since there will be students involved. Um, oh, and yeah, and I guess one of you guys are talking about finding possible interest. Was that about students being interested or is that about interest as in people willing to fund it? Well, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's definitely an interest in getting people to participate in this working group, for example, mm -hmm. um, and and anybody can participate. That's where you know we're happy to have any kind of contributions from people who are interested in diversity and inclusion metrics for open source projects. We would we welcome any any participation. Um, are any of you going to be at the at ChaosCon or FOSDEM? Um, Langdon White should be there. Um, he works at Red Hat, so he's going to be at the conference. Yeah, yeah, I know Langdon. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. yeah. So he's going to be at the conference. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Don, as, as um, you know, uh, so we we may have a meeting there, if that makes sense. Yeah. One of so because you asked about aligning interests, one one thing that came to mind for me is that instead of taking the conversation back to your team, if you have discussions about metrics, you can also invite your team to join this call and we can all discuss this together. Mm -hmm. Because those are conversations we are very much interested in, they're mm -hmm. interested for your team. And so even if this time doesn't work and you invite us to a time that um, your team is meeting. Maybe that is another way we can align interest. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and I guess another thing that we're also working on is we're all, like since this, this, the school semester in the U.S. just kind of started, we're also looking at recruiting maybe like two to three students to bring on board to help us with all I guess the building parts of the project as well. Um, so once we have, I guess, everyone assembled together, we'll, we'll frequent these meetings more often, like different people from uh, the team, just to keep up with what you guys are doing. And Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for, for joining us today. It was great. I look forward to what, you, what you're building, what comes out of this. Yeah, because we don't have a lot of real examples of people actually using the metrics. Um, maybe, Daniel, can you drop a link to the one of the diversity and inclusion, the OpenStack reports mm -hmm. that you've done sure. into the chat so that Amanda can take a look at it? Um, yeah. Those are really kind of the only ones, plus some stuff that Mozilla is doing. So this will be really interesting to see how you how you decide to implement it and what your what your results look like and what you what you do with the metrics. I'm yeah, I'm really interested to see where this goes. Oh yeah, that's that's how I initially found out about chaos was through the Mozilla, like the, the I think that was like the first diversity and inclusion call that everyone had that was on YouTube. Um, that's when I, I kind of found out about that. That was like our initial because there, there aren't a lot, a lot of like research papers about diversity and inclusion or anything around that topic. So it was very difficult to just find things um, uh, about that. So yeah, that, that was that was very good to have that initial video out there, and then the project also being out there was very helpful. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for the link. So, Emmanuel, I just uh, shared with all of you two links. The first one is the last, the very last diversity report focused on mentorship mainly and trying to understand the mentorship actions in the OpenStack Foundation. And the other one is a previous version, which doesn't contain any information about mentorship. So you have more information about the uh, gender diversity uh, from several perspectives too. Okay. okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Well, we are almost up on time. So we have one last item. And that is who wants to facilitate next week? Who is here and can facilitate? Uh, I can facilitate. I can do that. Awesome. Unless, unless Sarah wants to, because she was she was out this week. She she missed it. She missed her opportunity. Yeah, we we can uh, ping her. Because I feel like the two of us have kind of gone back and forth on a lot of the. I will do it if Sarah doesn't want it, but I would like to give her an opportunity to facilitate. 
Okay. Are you sending her an email to ask if she wants to? Um, yes. Awesome. Yes, in fact, I am right now. Perfect. And then I'll, I can do the note taking. And um, Daniel, thank you very much for taking notes today. Are you going to send them out to the mailing list? Perfect. You're welcome. Yeah, just copy paste is what I usually do. So then we have it archived. Awesome. Well, we still have two minutes. Any last items? Um, just one question, um, yes. I guess. As an individual, how do I get more involved with like the chaos project and like I guess being like an active like member of the diversity and inclusion working group. That's an excellent question. The first thing you can do is show up to our meetings. The and then from there you'll know what's going on, what we are working on. Um, subscribe to our mailing list, and mm -hmm. when we send something there, comment. We work more within our weekly meetings than on the mailing list but it's still sometimes we send updates there. Uh, you can also subscribe to our, or watch our repository um, so that you know when we open issues or create a pull request and there's work to do. And then there's a lot of issues that need working on, so. Yeah, we've tagged some of them. By we, I mean Georg has tagged some of them with um, good first issue, so those might be good places to start. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. But just showing up is a good first step. Yeah, thanks for coming. This, is, this has been great, Emmanuel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good week, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.